the offense is a double homicide that occurred July 4th of 1988. Shane Stewart and Sally McNally were teenagers, young and in love. They were in the middle of their teenage years when their lives were cut short. A moment in 25 years that I haven't thought of Shane and Sally. And I carry the last gift he gave with me is with me at all times. Shane left his house with only $11 in his pocket and was on his way to watch the fireworks on July 4th, 1988. Shane's the kind of 16-year-old that if he walked into this room, in about two or three minutes we would all be laughing and joking and having the biggest time. Close to midnight on July 4th, an Army Corps of Engineers Lake Ranger saw a coppered color 1980 Chevrolet Camaro inside Isabel Hart Park at O.C. Fisher. At that time, he saw a white female and a male inside the car, and nothing appeared to be wrong until the next day the Camaro was found inside the park at a different location. Investigators say several items of evidence were recovered, but both Shane and Sally were missing. Four months later, on November 11th, the skeletal remains of Sally were found near the southeast portion of the South Pole of Twin Buttes Reservoir. On November 14th, while searching the same area, law enforcement located the skeletal remains of Shane Stewart. We still have, we still have the evidence from, from 1988, uh, and uh, we still uh, have the capability to, to do any kind of test that we want to do on, on any item that we have in our possession. And uh, uh, so far, we, we haven't run into any roadblocks any hurdles that we haven't been able to overcome. In the original investigation, there were reports that the murders could have been tied to a cult. At the time, cults were prevalent in the area. We don't believe that the, the cult deal, the cult thing was a part of it, but we don't believe it was the reason. Another lead was a pickup that was stopped shortly after the murder. Police found Sally's driver's license in the possession of one of the occupants. That lead is still being investigated. There's some, there's some truth to that, yes. Okay. So is that something y'all are still looking at as a possible lead? Yes. Okay. We're, we're tracking down license, driver's license information as, mm -hmm. as we speak. Now police are wanting anyone with information about the murders 25 years ago to come forward. When it happened, a lot of people involved were in their teens. Investigators are hoping now that they are older, they'll come forward with more details they didn't divulge a long time ago. Shane and Sally had a lot of friends. They were teenagers, they were doing the teenage things. Uh, I think people in that group have knowledge about what's happened. And 25 years later, if they have children and they look at those children and they realize that the love and the closeness that they have between them, what it might be like to lose that, and as they reflect on the fact that they've taken away two children from parents and they want to remove that pain from their lives, they should come forward and talk. It's the only way they're going to get rid of the fear and the doubt and the looking over their shoulders because this case won't go away. Law enforcement is looking for them and so are the parents of the children.